Uh, so the stack is about Apache Spatial Information System. So uh, this project is a library for uh, other developers to create their own geospatial software. So Apache SIS is not an application by itself. It's a library for building your own application. There is a graphical user application. Actually, it was supposed to be one of the demo. Uh, but this uh, graphical application is more a demonstration to allow you to explore what Apache SIS can do for your application. So SIS provides tools for helping you to manage geospatial data. Uh, it's a kind of tools that could be used by Apache Sedona. For example, Apache Sedona is a project that uh, uh, uses geospatial data on the cloud. Uh, it's also a project that could be used by Apache uh, Bear Maps. So those two projects are not currently using Apache SIS, but they are example of target for Apache SIS. They may use that in the future. In order to make that easier for you to use Apache SIS and to avoid conflict, uh, this library intentionally has very few dependencies. So the most important dependency is the OGC Joe API, which is a standard set of interface. I uh, will talk about that a little bit later. So there is no log4g, no command something. It will reduce the risk, the risk of conflict if you use log4g on your side or command login on your side. So there will be no version conflict. It provides services like referencing service, metadata, raster operation, more on that in a, a few minutes. The main thing about Apache SIS, it's all about international standard. So uh, in particular, there is a consortium which, which is called the Open Geospatial Consortium. This is an organization that includes uh, organiz other organizations like NASA or the European Space Agency. There is also Microsoft, uh, Google, Airbus. Uh, they get together for trying to define international standards for geospatial data. So how you can publish the data, how you can access the data that are published by other people. Sometimes they work together with uh, the ISO organization, which is quite important when we work with government. The government often, uh, in many cases, will require that uh, we use the ISO standard. It happened, for example, in Europe. Uh, if some project want to work with the uh, European, uh, European organization, the uh, uh, Europe has uh, some, a program that they call INSPIRE, uh, which is a st very strong recommendation that we should follow about how we publish meta geospatial metadata. And sometimes OGC work with W3C as well. There is one thing nice with OGC, is that all the OGC standards are available for free. So it's quite interesting because uh, the ISO organization uh, usually, the standards are available uh, only. We have to pay for the standard for ISO organization. But because ISO and OGC work together, sometimes they publish the standard uh, jointly. So there is many cases where the exact same standard is available on both sides. And in OGC, you have the exact same standard than the ISO one, but for free. Just a different website and also different formatting, different cover page, but the content is the same. Uh, when we work, uh, uh, I think a nice thing at, about OGC is that uh, the, uh, it provides complementary focus. It's a place where developers and uh, experts can't meet. So, so, well, there is software developer like what we, uh, as we see in Apache, but there is also people working, meteorologists, oceanographers, uh, people working in space industry or uh, government or things like that. And those people are not necessarily developers, they have uh, more on the science side. And they will focus on, uh, their main concern is to have uh, data that they can trust. 
So it's not always the same concern that the one that uh, we see in some project. Some projects want to be fast or to be able to uh, uh, access new data format or things like that. But scientific uh, often want to trust the data first. And OGC is a place where the two community, those two community meet. They work together for making a standard. And often the standard that they produce try to address the two concerns together. Uh, when we try to develop our own software without the advice from people, from the expert of the community, we tend to not see in advance how complex the, the thing can be and to make something too simple, things that are not going to work in practice uh, in the real world. So for example, uh, we tend to say, many projects tend to think, I just need latitude, longitude. It's very simple. Well, actually, it's much more complicated than that. So uh, there is many models of the Earth. So for example, there is a hundred of uh, approximation of the Earth shape that we call ellipsoid. There is hundred of uh, geographic coordinate reference system. Each of them is a slightly different meaning of what is a latitude and a longitude. So if we just said, if we just give a latitude and a longitude without specifying which coordinate reference system we are using, it's ambiguous. And you may have error, it may sometimes be up to kilometers. Well, usually it's a few meters, but it can be, in the worst case, kilometers. On the right side, there is, for example, uh, the change in latitude and longitude from a system used in North America in 27 and in 83. So, as we can see, the, 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 for the same position, the number change depending which coordinate reference system we are using. The difference can be quite complex. We have the same thing in France and the same thing, I guess, in pretty much every country. So, uh, sometimes we see project uh, thinking, we don't need all this complexity. Let's use WGS84. WGS84 is the name of the coordinate reference system used by GPS. So sometimes we may think, I just use GPS and I don't care about everything else. There is an assumption that we see sometimes in software. I will show in one minute why the WGS84 is not enough. Sometimes we develop uh, with logic of the, of the kind if A equal B and B equal C, then A equal C. This is not what we have in the real world most of the time. We have A approximately equal B and B approximately equal to C. We cannot conclude A equals C. We have to deal with the two, the, the two cases. And if we look in the ISO standard, in the OTC standard, they use different names for those two, those two cases. So uh, what we call coordinate operation, they have the word conversion or transformation depending uh, if it is okay to apply this kind of logic or not. So for example, uh, if we talk about coordinate transformation, there is uh, 84, 85 transformation between the American system from 27 and WGS 84. They all depend where we are. So uh, when we use, when we said that we are using WGS 84, how we map that to the location where we are, it depends where we are. Uh, the term WGS84 today is itself ambiguous because there is now six versions of WGS84. They are on the right side. If we are uh, making study, for example, we look at uh, a river, stuff like that. Uh, if we m make the m measurement of height relative to WGS84, we can have stuff like uh, river that seem to flow up. The height is going increasing when we make measurement relative to the ellipsoid of WGS 84 because WGS 84 is an average for the whole Earth. It's not the best fit for each particular uh, place. And another complexity which is not shown in this uh, slide is that WGS 84 is a position that uh, uh, it's computed relative to the center of Earth. And uh, when we move, when we live in a place like Australia 
or New Zealand or Japan, those places those place move. Uh, it can be a few meters quite early, uh, quite, quite fast. So a coordinate in WGS84 change with time. So the ISO, uh, the ISO standard take care of this complexity. So sometimes as a software developer, we tend to think I don't need all this accuracy. For me, it's, it's okay to be just a few meters, uh, to have an error a few meters. But the thing is that it's not up to us to decide. It's to the user to decide. Do we need this accuracy? It depends if we are using, if we are going to use the data for finding a coffee shop, or if, if it is for driving a car, or for digging a hole in a place where there is gas and electricity and stuff like that underground. So it's up to user to decide if this accuracy is good enough or not. So it's our responsibility, I would say, our duty to tell the user what accuracy they can expect. It's perfectly fine for developers to say, I don't want to have this accuracy. I just want a software that is accurate to a few meters. That's perfectly fine. But we must tell that to the user. We must let them know what is the accuracy that we are providing. So it brings me to the next topic, which is metadata. So this is another uh, set uh, standard that uh, are defined by this organization. And the Europe, there is one st uh, standard, which is ISO 19111, which defines how to organize the metadata, uh, what metadata we should provide uh, when we publish geospatial metadata. And in Europe, this is a, a, a recommendation from the European Commission. I'm not quite sure. Uh, if it is mandatory of just a st very strong recommendation, but in theory, we should follow those metadata in Europe, this metadata standard for geospatial data in Europe. There is a format, data format for that. So this is the kind of thing that uh, Apache SIS manage. So SIS manage for you the coordinate transformation stuff that I said just before, those metadata uh, the export of those metadata in XML or adding them in XML as well. This is an example of how we describe a coordinate reference system according to the international standard that I said before. So there is different format, but this is one of the format which is used, which is, now, which is called well known text. So Apache SIS can read that and do coordinate operation using those information. One word of caution, uh, sometimes we see software that use that as if it was a data model. So uh, one word of caution, uh, this is only an encoding. It's not a data model. The data model looks like that. This is what we can, uh, an example of what we can see in the standard that I said just before. So in those standards, uh, we can see uh, UML like that. Uh, which is what I encourage people to implement in their, uh, uh, in their software. For making it easier for people to follow the UML uh, as published by those standards, there is a project which is called GeoAPI. GeoAPI is an OGC standard which takes the UML that we saw just before and makes Java interface from that, that after that project can implement. It's a little bit the same goal than GDBC. When we use GDBC, Java database connectivity in Java, uh, we can use the same interface for accessing uh, MySQL or PostgreSQL or any other software. So GeoAPI try to do the same thing with uh, uh, geospatial data, at least for coordinate reference system and metadata. There is an example about uh, how we can uh, get a definition of a coordinate reference system using two different uh, software. So using Apache SIS or using Prosh GNI. Prosh is a very popular software in C, C++, for uh, doing map projection. And there is a binding uh, using Java native interface. So the stuff in blue is uh, uh, 
uh, implementation neutral interface from Joe API. So there is just a starting point, which is a bit different depending of the implementation. But after that, I could, it's just a very beginning. We could put much more stuff. But everything in blue af after that is, uh, 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 is implementation neutral. So for developer, it's a safety. So you are not tied too much to Apache SIS. You have the freedom, some freedom to move to another implementation if after some experiment you find that Apache SIS does not fit your need, or conversely, if you want to switch from another project. Uh, this is the demo that I, some demo that I was supposed to do. Uh, the thing that I wanted to show with the demo was uh, uh, the Apache SIS can give you information about the accuracy of those transformations. It was transforming the coordinate of some city, but providing information like the domain of validity of the transformation, the accuracy, and also providing warning, saying, be careful, you are using a deprecated definition, CRS definition, or be, be careful, the access does not seem quite right for the operation that you are go, uh, doing. Uh, just an example of the kind of complexity that Apache SAS helps you to manage. Uh, when we transform a bonding box from one CRS to the other, it's not enough to just transform the four corner. So if we look at the picture on the right side on the top, if, we, if I only take the four corner, uh, on the left side, pardon me, if I take the left side and I transform that, uh, no, sorry, the... the Yes, the left side, I transform that to the right side. If I only take the four corner, I will miss all the part on the bottom. So the transformation of a rectangle is more complex. Uh, there is a the case when we cross the line from minus 180 degrees to plus, uh, plus 180 degrees. It's quite difficult to manage, actually. It's not just a matter of shifting the longitude. Uh, it's... Uh, just shifting the longitude using a range of zero to 360 does not work in our case. So all the operation union intersection uh, contains are more complicated than what it looks like. And it's even more complicated when all this stuff is in a, a mix with a, a map projection operation. So SIS under that. There is also code for reading data like a GeoTIF file. So uh, you can, uh, uh, Apache CS can reproject raster for you, like uh, on the right side, and it, comp it can read the tile only on request. So for example, it understands the cloud-optimized GeoTIF format, which is a format which is using HTTP range to access only the part of the file that you need from internet. So you could put on a cloud, on a S S3 server, on a cloud, a hodge file, a terabyte uh, a, a terabyte big file using, if the file is uh, a valid cloud optimized GeoTIFF file, using HTTP range, Apache SIS will read just the, only the tiles that uh, it needs for the operation that you want to do. So uh, you can make a complex chain of operation and uh, it cascade. The, on the uh, on the website, there is a how-to page that is going to, uh, which is giving example about uh, how you can do some stuff with Apache SIS. The standard one gives the list of standards that are implemented. A very quick note for saying that Apache SIS had been used as a prototype last summer for experimenting the use of geospatial in space. So we have used, we took as a use case a mission from NASA, which have sent a spacecraft against an asteroid to test our capacity to change the trajectory of the asteroid in case of an asteroid is coming to Earth, to, uh, on Earth. So this is an interesting case because we have many coordinate reference systems that are involved. The objects are moving. So we have a coordinate reference system for Sun, Sun for Earth, for the spacecraft. Uh, for the asteroid, the moon of the asteroid. And we have experimented extension to the existing standard for, make, for being able to handle that. So this one is a GML, Geographic Markup Language. 
It's one of the standard that attacked before. Apache SIS can read that file, and the stuff in green are new, uh, uh, new elements that we have experimented during the testbed, which we see testbed, for uh, using GML in space. So this one, uh, all the green stuff are not in the official release of Apache SIS. It's on a branch because it's not a standard. It was just an experiment. But it shows that uh, how we can use uh, your special uh, technology in space. So this is a domain that are being developed right now. Uh, work that is going on right now on uh, Apache SIS, we are making an upgrade to the new standard. So there is new standard that take in account the fact that Earth is moving. So, for example, in Japan, after the earthquake, some part of Japan has moved by seven meters. Even, even if we are not in a place moving that much, that much, there is some stuff that are moving. For example, the sea level. Uh, when we need to uh, measure the position of something relative to the sea level, the sea level is moving every day with tide. So this is a kind of d dynamic coordinate reference system. So dynamic coordinate reference system is a new stuff coming in, in uh, the recent standard that we are implementing uh, in Apache SIS. This is a screenshot of the demo that I wanted to show. And uh, I will stop there. Thank you. I think I'm really sorry that you didn't have a chance to, to show your demo. <laughs> <laughs>